Cool. Well, hey, let's get started. More people are probably going to join as we go, but that's fine. We're just going to start talking about starts. Um, so first, we're going to we're going to talk about front starts, and then we're going to do a little bit talking about back starts. But we'll probably spend most of our time talking about the front starts off the blocks. Um, as I said, we're going to be talking a lot. If you have a question at any point, put your hand up, and we'll call on you. Um, so, a couple things. Number one, starts are probably the most fun part. Uh, for a lot of people in swimming, just being super explosive and getting into the water with a ton of speed is fun. Um, number two, they make a huge difference in every single race. Even your longer races, the better your start, the more impact uh, you're going to be able to have on your races. Um, you know, we want to enter into a race having, you know, uh, no handicaps against, you know, our, our opponents. We want to be, from the beginning, giving ourselves a chance to win, right? Um, when we do our start, that is when we are at our fastest in swimming. You are never going to get faster than you are on your start, right? You're not going to increase speed from the swimming. So our whole goal in swimming is just to maintain the speed from our start the whole rest of the way as best we can. So the faster your start, the faster that level of speed that you can try and maintain throughout the rest of your race, okay? Um, everybody here has probably had races where you felt like you had a really good start. Those might not be as easy to remember though as the races where you had a really bad start. Uh, has anybody here ever had a race where you remember just having a terrible, terrible start and how much that impacted your race? I know I do. I had a race where once my back foot just completely slipped and I just plummeted straight to the bottom of like a 12 foot deep pool. And so that obviously ruined my entire race. So what we want is consistency. We never want to have a swim where we're worried about, you know, plummeting down or belly flopping or in any possible way a race being ruined by a bad start, right? We don't want that to even be a possibility. So when we're talking about consistent good starts, we're going to break it down into kind of three main categories today. All right. First category is going to be our position on the blocks and how we get off the blocks. Our second category is going to be getting a lot of power going forward over the water. And then our third category is going to be how we enter into the pool itself. All right, and we're going to talk about that with front starts first. Um, so as we look into it, let's uh, take a moment here. I'm going to start by actually showing you guys some video and just kind of pointing at my screen. Sounds good. So I'm going to share my screen here. Oh, I think Jeremy has to enable it so that I can screen share because it said it's disabled. I want everybody to hum some elevator music to yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. That's very good. Um, we're gonna look at uh, a bunch of different uh, Olympic level athletes doing starts. And we're gonna start by just kind of looking at their position on the blocks and then kind of learning about that and then going from there. Oh, I can share my screen now. Booyah. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, all right, so let's just go straight into here. All right, I think everybody can see this screen that I'm moving around now, yeah? Oh yeah, gonna make it a full screen. So here we are uh, watching uh, the start from the uh, 50 meter free from world championships last summer. Most of these videos are actually going to be from that championship meet. Um, and here is Simone Manuel, pretty much right in the middle of your screen. And we're gonna look at a few different positions on the blocks here. Um, the number one thing that I want us to look at first is front toes over the edge. You can see all of these women have their front toes over the edge. Um, that one's pretty obvious to most of us. Um, and you can see that the back foot, they have the wedge. And basically every single one of these athletes have their back foot about halfway up the wedge, right? So when we are, when we are uh, taking our position with the wedge, if we have the opportunity to use a wedge, we want our foot to be halfway up. We never want our foot to be somewhat down on the block and a little bit on the wedge. We always want it to be about halfway up, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. The feet should be about hip width apart, okay? You can see, for example, this swimmer here in the yellow cap, her foot is probably about hip to shoulder width apart, but it's not behind her other foot. Some swimmers go super narrow with their stance and, and we don't want that to be the case, okay? Um, we wanna be nice and balanced. 
from front to back, we don't want all our weight to be on our front foot, we don't want all of it to be on our back foot, okay? When we take our marks and we take our position, like all of these athletes have, we want to sink back just a little bit so that we kind of feel ourselves able to press into our back foot a little bit, but we don't want to be leaning way far back because then it's going to take forever just to get back over the water again. Okay, so this is pretty much the position we want to be in. You'll notice that all of these swimmers have pretty much a, a high hip, which is what we really want. Like if you see this swimmer here in lane seven, as well as Simone, high hip. And that high hip is going to help us generate a lot of power off the back foot. Okay, and so when we talk about getting off the blocks here from this position, the first thing you're going to notice that happens is we're going to move forward here just like a few frames here. Let's see. Let's see if I got this right. Hang on. All right. Now, some reason my keyboard's not working, but we can just kind of take it a little bit at a time. So the first thing you're going to notice is that all these swimmers are going to engage their arms a little bit by a little bit, and then the back foot fires from there, right? Arms first, back foot, getting the weight out front, and then the front foot takes over from there, right? So we're, our very first moment as we're doing our start, we are yanking on the blocks with our arms and kicking that back foot. And that gets us a lot of momentum going forward. You'll notice that every swimmer here, when they have taken their marks, their arms are flexed, right? None of them are just sort of hanging their hands down by the blocks. Every swimmer here has a flexed arm. Some of them are straight, some of them are a little bent. That might come down to your body shape and how long your arms are, but all of them are flexed, right? We like a little bit of bend if possible, right? But you can see right here in the middle, uh, Simone Manuel and Kate Campbell both have pretty straight arms, but as long as they're flexed, we can really yank on that block, throw our bodies forward, and then carry through the rest of it. All right, so that is the position we wanna have on the blocks. And you can see in some of these other videos we're gonna be checking out as well. I'm gonna scoop back here a little bit. Actually, we're gonna look at this one of Nathan Adrian really quick. The dupe, his position on the blocks. You can see his hips are super high and he's got that little bit of bend in his elbow, right? It doesn't hurt that Nathan Adrian is basically a million feet tall, right? So he can probably reach down and get a nice little elbow bend, right? And you can see he's yanking on the block and driving with that back leg. That's what's kickstarting his momentum. And then everything follows from there and he gets a super powerful start, but it all starts from this really good position on the blocks, all right? So, Bringing it back really quick, just so I can see all of your faces. Let's see, stop, share. Figuring it out. Does anybody have any questions about anything that we've looked at so far, just with position on the blocks? All pretty intuitive, you guys are all pretty smart. Dan, oh wait, not Liam, your hand is up. What you got, not Liam? Uh, so, I just wanna ask, what are your expectations for how far we have to go when we do a start? That's a super good question, Liam. Thank you for asking that. Not so <laughs> the answer, that's kind of a, a uh, it's such a good question that it kind of deserves a bit of a, a complex answer. But um, the basic answer is that it's going to change for each person, right? So Nathan Adrian, who's like 6'8 or something like that, he's huge, extremely strong. He had better be able to get farther out over the water than any of you guys, right? That's just naturally how it is. So how far you get over the water is going to basically depend on your strength and your size, right? Um, what you want to really do is kind of determine where your sweet spot is by practicing it, right? And basically finding where you can get the farthest without basically belly flopping, okay? And we're going to kind of talk about our angle into the water a little bit later. All right, so Liam, I'm gonna even swing around and answer that question some more in about like 10 minutes or so, cool? But short answer, it's gonna just kind of depend on each person. There's not so much an expectation that you go super duper far, the most important thing is that you hit the water with a lot of speed, cool? Booyah. All right, so I'm gonna take us back to screen share and we're gonna watch now some videos of Caleb Dressel. Um, because when we think of really, really good starts, we pretty much think of Caleb Dressel. Um, he is basically a superhero. It's kind of gross how good his starts are. So let's take this back really quick. All right, I'm gonna say bye to Nathan for a moment, and we're gonna to go to Caleb Dressel. We got two different starts from Caleb here. All right, so here's number one, and you can find Caleb. He's a little far, but you know, 
that's the price you pay for being the fastest in prelims, right? In the middle of the pool. So Caleb's out here. Rowdy Gaines is even nice enough to circle him for us, okay? You can see his position on the blocks, kind of just like uh, Nathan that we were just talking about. Hips are really high. He's got a nice balanced start. Once again, you can see basically every swimmer is about halfway up on the wedge with their back foot. If you don't have a wedge, we just place that back foot in, in the position where we feel we can be powerful, all right? So the question now that Caleb is gonna help us answer is how do we take the momentum from our back foot and our arms and translate that into power going far over the water like Liam was asking about, right? So when we watch Caleb, he gets that same burst. Whoa, a little too fast there. He gets that same burst over the water, starting with his arms. You can see the elbow bend, right? Right here, you can see the elbow bend. You can see the back leg kick in. The high hips help him push really hard off that wedge. And now we can see the front leg take over. And this part here where the leg goes from bent to fully extended, see that full extension on the leg? That's where we get the most power out over the water, okay? If you didn't know, Caleb Dressel is an insanely good jumper. And that's a huge reason why his starts are just better than everybody else's. He jumps with a ton of power over the water and then hits the water in a really nice line. And then, like magic, boom, way out in front. Pretty insane, right? Huge lead. Let's just watch it in real time. There's the launch. And in just about six or seven seconds, he's half a body length in front of everybody else. Pretty nasty, especially considering everybody else here. This is world championships, right? These aren't some scrubs. This is some pretty serious competition, okay? So, arms and the back leg kick us off, and then that front leg drives to a full extension, okay? Um, one thing that I wanna mention too, and you can see it with all of these swimmers, that front leg isn't kicking in until their weight has really shifted forward. Their balance is out in front of their bodies, right? If Caleb starts pushing with his front leg when he's still here, He's just going to go up and then back down. But since he's driving out in front, he's getting his center of gravity forward. Now when he kicks with that front leg, he just catapults over the water. Okay. Oh, yeah. Here's a second video. Just watch it in real time. Caleb's out here. Just like magic, everybody's here, and he's going to be surfacing right up here. Here he is one more time. Nice high hips. Booyah. You'll notice one thing that Caleb does with his arms that makes it really obvious just how hard he's pulling on the blocks. Watch his arms as he comes back over the top like this. You can tell that he's really yanking on the blocks because of the way that his elbows are back here, and then he has to bring them back forward into that streamline. Caleb might be the swimmer who uses his arms the most out of just about anybody in the world. And that helps him get just that extra little bit of power. Okay, cool. Any questions about anything that we covered the last five or so minutes? No, nah, dude. Excellent, cool. Again, raise your hand if you got any questions or if I say something that doesn't make any sense to you. Um, taking it back to the screen share there really quick. Um, and this is gonna kind of take us into our third topic. One thing you'll notice is Caleb's angle over the water, right? And really everybody else is, nobody is doing a big lollipop rainbow dive going way up high and then way down, right? And nobody is going straight into the water either. Every single swimmer is diving out forward, right? What's the point of a start unless it gives us as much speed as possible, right? And that speed, we want it to be forward speed, right? It's not a race to see who can go up as high as possible or down into the pool as fast as possible. We want forward speed as early as possible and we want that speed to be as high as possible, right? So look at all of them getting nice and forward over the water, right? Um, I'm gonna introduce you guys to a new swimmer now. All right, this is Bob. He's Bob the Bounder instead of Bob the Builder, okay? Welcome to my artistic skills. So. Here are the basic three options that we can have when we go over the water, okay? We can either go up, 
and then back down, okay? That dashed line there. What's gonna happen if we do that? Feel free to just jump in and answer. What's gonna happen if we do this when we hit the water? You're gonna go too deep. Exactly, right? Our momentum is gonna continue that way. Who's done that before? Where you dive into the water and you go, oops, I am too deep. Yeah, I've been there. And then it takes forever just to get back up to the surface, right? And then you can start racing and you're way behind, right? So we never wanna have that situation, okay? Number two is the going just into the pool as early as possible, right? And in this particular case, we can get back up on the surface nice and quick, but you're gonna be really behind. What we want is to be right in that middle ground where we're getting out forward, getting a lot of speed and entering the water in such a way that our momentum carries us like that, okay? We want that nice, happy middle ground, okay? Does that make sense? We're gonna to get to say hi to Bob again later in a little minute when we talk about backstroke starts. Hey, Joe. What's up? Uh, Misty had something she wanted to add. Let's hear from Coach Misty. Um, so I just wanted to point out that probably one of the best things young swimmers can learn to do on that, as you were talking about um, entry and that is to get into streamline hand over hand above the water. Um, not try to find their hands in the water because that's a big mistake um, I find younger kids have. So exploding from the blocks and immediately finding your hands into streamline. And they can practice that on land now, kind of 100%. swinging from back to front. So that's something they could be doing out of the pool. 100%. Misty, you took the words right out of my mouth. Everybody, oh, sorry. <laughs> give, everybody give Coach Misty a round of applause, please. <laughs> Fantastic to hear from her. Yeah, and, and Misty, you, can, you actually said something that I was going to say just at the end, but let's say it right now. The, the number one thing you can all practice right now is streamlining, and none of this stuff is going to matter. It doesn't matter how good your start is. Your start is only going to be as good as your streamline is, right? So, you know, somebody could fire you out of a cannon into the pool, right? But as soon as you hit the water, if there is any drag in your body line, it's going to be like you just put a parachute out behind you, right? And you're going to slow down immediately. Same thing with a start, right? You want to feel like you're being shot out of a cannon, but that you are then slipping in nicely in the tightest streamline possible. Like Coach Misty was saying, hand over hand, lock it in, get as tight as you can, and get real nice and tight against your head. Hard to do when you're wearing big bulky headphones, but you're probably not going to do that when you're in the pool. Cool? Any questions about that? Liam, what you got? Not Liam, did you have a question? Yeah. What you got? Everyone should clap for Coach Misty. I saw a lot of clap emojis. You guys did a good job. I'm proud of all of you. Hi, Coach Misty. All right, we're going to move on before we run completely out of time. So. Let's take it back and look at what Coach Misty was saying. Because I think she said it perfectly. Looking back at this video of Caleb Dressel, remember he's out here. It's kind of funny seeing them all just hanging out here in the middle of the air. Let's look at how he enters the water, okay? I think we could describe this as a pretty straight line, right? Okay? That's about as good as it gets. When we hit the water, our, our ideal position is total straight line, hands leading, head following, legs behind the torso, just all through a nice tight hole into the water. That's basically exactly what we're looking for right there. And check it out. What was Coach Misty saying? Find that streamline hand over hand before you hit the water, okay? I wish I could tell you who exactly all of these people are lane by lane, but I can tell you that lane eight has it perfectly, and you can tell Caleb is slipping into a streamline perfectly before he even gets close to the water too. That's exactly how we want to be, okay? Even lane seven, who's a little late to the game, finds that streamline before he hits the water, okay? That's exactly how we want to be, just like that, okay? Let's look at that line one more time here from Caleb. You can see right as he's about to hit the water, the legs are coming together. He's already in his streamline and then entering in, in just the most perfect line imaginable, right? So the reason that Caleb Dressel gets so far ahead on his start Number one, tons of power. His legs are really driving him far. And then number two, once he gets in, he's in the straightest line imaginable, so he doesn't lose that speed right away. Pretty cool, huh? All right. That's about that.
And then after you hit the water, it's all about fast dolphins so that you can stay at the front once you hit the water with a ton of speed. Cool? Okay, we're gonna take this to backstroke now. Um, anybody have any questions about the front start before we move to backstroke really quick? All right, Logan is giving me like, I'm, I'm getting seasick seeing him shake that camera. Um, we're gonna take this to backstroke. We're gonna watch a, a few backstroke starts and then any final questions that you guys might have. Um, as Coach Misty was saying, practice your streamline while you're on land. That's something you can do every day. Also, for starts, whenever we do something in dry land that involves one leg exercises, like reverse lunges, that can really help you get used to balancing on one leg, pressing with one leg, kind of like we do in a start when we lean out over the front leg and then drive off that front leg into the water. Cool? All right, enough of me talking. Let's talk about backstroke starts. Sharing. One more time. Let's watch backstroke. Going to skip ahead one more time. We'll come to Reagan Smith last. So this was the 100 backstroke from World Championships last summer, okay? Um, I believe the winner was Kylie Mass in lane four. I could be remembering wrong, but I think Kylie won. A um, few things about backstroke. Just like on the front start, we need to make sure that our position is perfect. If your position isn't right, then it doesn't matter how strong you are, the start isn't gonna be quite right. Um, so when we are placing our feet, Walk, look really closely at all of these athletes' feet. They're all as high as they can be without the toes being in the gutter, right? Because you're not allowed to do that. We never want there to be like a big space, a big gap between the top of the wall and where your toes are. We want those feet nice and high, okay? Higher the better, basically, uh, except that you can't put your toes in the gutter, okay? We want those feet to be about hip to shoulder width apart, really more like hip width, but not super narrow and together. If your feet are together, they're too narrow. If your feet are way outside your shoulder width, they're too wide. Our best position of power is with our feet under us in hip width position, okay? So try and get those feet right in line under your hips, okay? Um, let's watch all of these women take their marks really quick. Scooting ahead, scooting ahead, scooting ahead. Oh yeah, there we go. And I'm looking particularly at lane four at Kylie, okay? But really we could look at anybody. I also really like Olivia's position in lane seven. You'll notice that all of these swimmers have a really good neutral head position, okay? They're not doing the thing where their heads are way in like this, okay? And none of them are way out back like this in some sort of strange position. Their heads are all sort of a nice natural long extension of their spines, and they've all come up in the water, okay? A really common thing that young swimmers do is you guys pull yourselves super far into the wall. And you'll notice, None of these athletes are like headbutting the blocks. Lane two is probably the one who's closest in towards the wall. But most of these swimmers are really focusing on just bringing themselves up into a high position where they can be really strong. Okay, if we look across the board, you'll see that pretty much all of them, their butt is at the surface of the water or slightly above. And that's basically what we want. If we're a little higher, then when we actually drive off the wall, now we can actually get our hips over the water and we can have a lot less drag as we get into the water. Same thing as when we do a front start. We want to get over the water and then slice in in a single line through a small hole. Does that make sense so far? We never want to be up so high that we're out of control and that our feet slip down. We just want to try and get our butt to the surface of the water, okay? And as we get bigger and stronger, even a little bit over the surface of the water if we can, okay? Now let's watch this start actually happen. Yeah, every single one of them, super clean. Let's watch Olivia in lane seven. If you don't know Olivia Smoliga, she's from Illinois. That's pretty cool. She's a total monster backstroker. Look at that, incredibly nice line over the water. One more time here, we'll go nice and slow. She is second from the bottom in the gray suit. You can see right off the bat, throwing her head and throwing the block away from her with her arms. You see that? Watch how her arms go from bent at a 90 degree angle, and she throws the block away from her. You see that? Just like when we're on the blocks, when we do a backstroke start, first thing we're doing is we're throwing with the arms, right? And then our legs kick in once we shift our weight back over our hips, right? So throwing with the arms and then driving with the legs. 
I just pointed to my screen with my hand as if you guys can see what I'm pointing at, which is kind of funny to me. And then look at that. Holy cow. Isn't that crazy? It's like a perfect bridge back bend over the water, which means she's gonna enter in with her hands first, and then her hips are gonna follow, and then her feet. And then look at that straight line. Crazy, super clean. That's basically exactly how we wanna be. High hips, explode, nice straight line. Cool, and then just for kicks, we're gonna watch Reagan Smith do her start. If you don't know who Reagan Smith is, well, that's not Reagan Smith at all. I think one more, right? Yeah, cool. You don't know who Reagan Smith is, she's here in lane four. She now holds the world records in the 100 back and the 200 back. She's a beast. Here she is in lane four. You can see high, right? Hips are just slightly over the water, okay? Head is a little bit more in than Kylie's in, is, which is kind of interesting. But then really similar to Olivia, we can see just how clean she is getting into the water. Nice high hips and then kicking the feet up at the end. Once again, we see the theme, bent elbow and throwing the block away from her, right? And then kicking in with the legs. Cool. And then guess what every single one of these athletes shares? Insanely strong dolphin kicks, okay? If you want to be a great backstroker someday, gotta have crazy good underwater dolphin kicks, okay? All these girls are insanely strong dolphin kickers, okay? Backstroke is super duper important. Cool. Any questions about backstroke starts right now? Hey, Joe, Misty uh, raised her hand. Yeah, Misty, let's hear it. Yeah, I just wanted to point out um, that picture of those starts. It's very important. Most people, once they pull themselves up, sit back down in the water and then go back. And then they're in the water when they push on their start. So none of them, they once they pull themselves up, they don't sit back down in the water and then push. And that's what a number of you younger swimmers will do. You'll pull yourself up, then sit down and then push. You wanna push from the, the higher point. Um, so you don't see anyone pushing back or squatting back down or releasing downward. Does that make sense? That makes so much sense, Misty. Thank you for saying that. I didn't think to bring it up, but that's totally true. You'll see, you can see it perfectly right here. All eight of these swimmers, they take their marks nice and high, but then when they drive off, you can see they don't sink down at all. They stay high and drive right over the water, just as Misty was saying. Thank you, Misty. That's a super good point. Does that make sense to everybody? Nod your head aggressively up and down, if that makes sense to you. Good. I want you to shake your brain a little bit. Cool? Um, that is about all I have. Um, one thing for backstroke starts as well, like Missy was saying, obviously we need to be able to hit the water in a tight streamline, keep working your streamlines. But every time we do squats in dry land, that directly helps us with getting better at backstroke starts, right? Being explosive in our upper leg muscles, which are the biggest muscles in our body, is gonna help you out a lot when you do a backstroke start, as well as any time that we do jumps, like vertical jumps in our dry land training. That's gonna help you a lot. That sort of power and explosiveness is gonna help you a ton, okay? But don't forget, just like the front start, we need to use our arms. We need to throw the block away from us to help get us started before we throw with the legs. Cool? Um, that's about all I have. Uh, any questions from anybody? Okay, cool. Final thought, just as Misty was saying, your start is only gonna be as good as your streamline is, right? So make sure that while we're not in the pool, we're still practicing streamlines. We're practicing holding this position nice and tight so that when we do get back in the water, you don't like push off the wall the first time and you're like, I can't even reach my hands together or something like that. Cause then it's gonna be a total, total catastrophe getting in off the blocks. Yeah, just as Michael said, cool. All right, well guys, thank you so much for coming and uh, sharing this time with us. This was super awesome. Um, hopefully you learned something or at least just remembered something that maybe you forgot because it was a while ago. Um, if you did learn something new or if you thought of something that you hadn't thought of before, write it down before you forget because you will totally forget otherwise. Take it from me, somebody who forgets things all the time. Okay, well, thank you guys. Appreciate you all being here and uh, 
we will see you later. If you uh, if you didn't know already, Coach Mike is going to be doing one of these for the older kids at a uh, five o'clock in about a half hour. So wish him luck. And uh, yeah.